today we're going to learn how to make drums with using only a subtractor and some effects. I'll show you how to make a combinator and bring them all together, uh, the individual sounds, into one drum kit so you'll be able to make your own custom drum kit. So let's get into it. All right, here we are in Reason, brand new project ready to go. First, what we want to do, since we're going to be later bringing this into a combinator, rather than build them, bring them into a combinator, and have to do a bunch of rewiring later on, we're going to start out by creating a combinator. So click Utilities and select Combinator. Should be the first thing at the top. Drop one in. All right. Go to Utilities again. We need a mixer for this puppy. So normally I try and go with the minimal mixer, but I have found that the minimal mixer offers some limitations I don't love because it only has one effect send off of it. Um, so what I usually do is I try and you know get a little more on the effect send. So I'm going to go with the 16 channel mixer, right? Or 14 channel mixer. Sorry. I always say 16 because it just that's a normal mixer. 14 to me is just a weird number. Um, but anyway. All right, so here we are. We've got our mixer in here. Now we're going to need some instruments. And since we're basing this whole thing on a subtractor, let's get some subtractors. So click instrument and we're going to go down to subtractor and I'm going to grab one. I'm going to drop it right here. Now, as I mentioned in my previous video, I'm going to start using shortcut keys and tell you when I'm using them and why I'm using them so you can kind of get uh, your head wrapped around what some of the shortcut keys are and what they do. In this case, I'm looking at the back. That was tab, so I'm looking at the back. I want two more subtractors. So I'm going to, instead of you know going over and dragging two more and dropping them in here, or even go into it right-clicking and saying duplicate you know, device and tracks or any of that, I'm just going to hit Control or Command on Mac and D. Control D will bring these in for me just like that. Now I have two more subtractors. What I don't have is two more subtractors wired up to the mixer. I'm just going to fold this one for a minute here. Click this little icon. And now I can see my second subtractor right there. I'm just going to drag a wire over to its main. I'm going to do that with the second one as well. And now, if we go to the front, I have the world's loudest bass because it's essentially three basses stacked on top of each other, all doing the same thing. I'm going to mute channel one and two first since they're folded. I'll start with channel three. All right. What we want to do first is I want to right click this uh, loading folder right here. In this case, it's over here because it's unfolded. I'll right click this and I'm going to do this to all of them. I'm going to hit reset device on all of them. And the reason I'm doing this is because now we are at the base level sound. Everything basically is, uh, you know, reset to kind of default. It's, it's easier to work a new patch from this place from here than to go and, uh, you know, start from an existing sound, unless you're trying to work on something like that sound in cases like that. Uh, that's not a bad idea. And you might actually want to do that with these once we're done. I mean, I'm going to give you guys this stuff anyway. You'll be able to download it. But this is going to be really cool because by the time you're done, you'll have three drums that you created from, you know, just a little bit of instruction here. Because honestly, it would be hard for you to get the exact drum I'm getting um, just because... You know, I drag this slider, you know, this much. It's it's not the same for you. You know what I mean? Maybe you go here and, and I'm, I'm just up like here because it looks about the same, right? You've, if you do it visually, you're going to be kind of manually putting in your own variables and you will definitely get a different sound for that. Unless you want to follow my exact number like I'm at 36 and you move yours to 36. All right, so here we are. We're at the last drum, the third drum sound, which in this case, I want to be my snare. So I'm going to start with my snare. Usually I would start with kick, but I'm, since I'm at the right, I'm just going to start right there. Let's put these both on sine wave. And I'm going to drop this one down to zero. Now you'll notice there's no real sound to it until I get higher in the octave. But uh, I'm just using that for a little bit of a beater sound in the beginning 
of the uh, of the snare. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this down to one, so we can only get one voice at a time. And what I want to do is I want to turn this mixer about right there, a little before 75%. What that's going to do is you can still hear like the little tick from the oscillator. But what we want to do is enable noise because noise is kind of where your snare drum sound is going to come from. All right. Let's turn this noise down just a little because that's a little harsh. It's a lot. Like we're, all, we're getting there already. I mean, it's it's pretty, you know, sounding kind of snary. I'm going to adjust my filter a little here. I'm going to put my uh, filter frequency up. And I'm going to take my resonance. I'm going to go just a little higher. All right. And we're going to take the... Let's see. Yeah. We'll adjust the keyboard right here just a smidge. That'll give us a little variation depending where you play it. And I'm going to link these two uh, filters. And... Right about there. All right, now I want to make a couple adjustments to the amp envelope. This is kind of how the sound is going to play through its life, if you would, you know, like how long it's going to stay active, how long it'll sing for till how till it goes to release, you know. All right, and now I think I'll adjust the frequency to mod envelope just a little bit. Let's take this decay up a little bit. We'll bring the sustain up just a little bit above that. And you can't hear much, but it did do something. It's just a little extra. And I'm also going to take this and adjust the velocity. Let's turn this amount up just a little bit, I think. Can you hear the difference there? Just trying to take some of the... Give it some pop without... Not the best uh, snare in the world, but we're going to use that. All right, so there's my snare. Now I'm going to mute my snare. The reason I'm doing this is so right now they'd all play at once, like I showed you a minute ago. And now we have our second drum. I'm going to expand this. This is going to be our hi-hat. Now our hi-hat is kind of the same type of sound as a snare, just more hissy, less punchy. So we're going to stop by turning the mix way up here so we have no oscillator noise. In this case, I, I don't want any oscillator at all. I just want um, the noise generator here. So I'm going to turn the noise. Let's turn up the color. We're going to go with modulation. I'm going to leave where it is. Put the filter up just a little bit. And now I need to tweak these filters so that we don't have so much pop to it. And let's go with a band pass instead of a low pass. This will give me a little more. There we go. Ah, yeah. The frequency range we want is right around there. Uh, I'm going to call that done, I think. I like the way that sounds. There's our hi hat. And now let's go over here. I'm going to minimize, fold that one again. And now I'm going to take this guy right here and I'm going to make our kick drum there. Now the kick drum, of course, you know, depends what kind of kick drum you want. And that's kind of subjective to, you know, different types of music and such. I'm just going to go for kind of a nice rounder kind of kick drum sound. You'll see where we land here and you can tweak it from there if you want to go further with it, of course. I'm going to do the same thing I've been doing. Turn mix way up so we have no oscillators. Turn the noise on. Which technically, when I say that we have no oscillators, noise is kind of an oscillator. Let's turn the color down. Uh, we've got our level up already. That's good. Let's see. So now, when you're doing a kick, a lot of times you'll see that the cutoff and the resonance are the opposite of where they'd be if there was a high type sound. This kind of makes it almost a low type sound. You know, it would be incredibly good. I'm doing this since talking. I'm thinking, why is the sound not changing? Because I forgot to mute the channel again. Let's mute the two channels we're not using. 
All right. Yeah. So, well, that was pretty close. Not bad for uh, doing it kind of blind. <laughs> All right, let's turn this filter on here. We're going to adjust this just a smidge. So we're real close here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push the envelope up a little bit here, and I'm going to give it a little bit of runoff at the end. Feel like we're right there. There we go. Nice clubby kick. And that's it. So now we've got three drums made. So what now you say? If I unmute all these, what you'll see is that they all play at once. Definitely not the desired effect. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go back to my instruments and I'm going to get a Kong drum designer. If you would rather use uh, a reed drum, that will work as well. I usually go with the Kong just because it has some other features that I want to show you. I'm going to hold down shift and drag this in right here. And the reason I'm holding down shift is because when you hold down shift, I'm going to look at the back here again, press tab. You'll see that nothing is hooked up. It's just sitting there, right? That's exactly how I want it to be right now. Because I don't want any sound out of this thing. All I want to use it for is a controller. Let's go to the front. Tab to get to the front. Right click here. I'm going to reset the drum machine. And so if we go right. Why did I misclick? Oh, there it is. It's not as far down. I just lost my place for a second. All right, so now all the drums say drum, 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 drum. They don't do anything. Um, and if I play this, still, we have a situation where everything's playing at once. What we want to do next is go up to the combinator and hit editor. See how the subtractor 1, 2, and 3 right here all say key? That means that they're receiving when you press a key. Anytime you press a key, they get a note. Let's turn that off. We don't want them to get the note. What we want to do is have the Kong get the notes and then feed the notes to the subtractors. Basically, the Kong becomes a controller and the subtractors become just sound modules. And they have one set sound that will be presented each time you trigger them. You won't have anything pitched, you won't have anything change uh, based on velocity or anything like that. That's what we want to do. So now, what we want to do to get there, I'm going to press tab. And you will see, I'm going to fold this guy right here because he's kind of blocking my jam. You'll see that the subtractor has a gate in right here. And all of these drums have a gate out. What does that mean? That means that if you've done anything with Eurorack or any of that type of thing, you know how there's a signal out, signal in. This is letting me take the signal out that when you press the button, it sends a signal, a trigger, to whatever I want to send it to. In this case, I'm going to bring it to this subtractor. So now my kick drum is wired to that subtractor. I'm going to do the same thing right here for my hi-hat. And then I'm going to do it one more time. There we go. So you had to hold over it for a second. It will pop open if you just hold over it if it's folded. Uh, one more time for our hi-hat. I'm sorry, for our snare. That first, this was our kick, hi-hat, snare. I'm saying them in the wrong order. I apologize. All right. Well, now, if I go to my drums... right? They're mapped. They work. We are well on our way to having exactly what we wanted, our own custom drum kit. 
What's missing? Effects. Effects are missing. Well, we can bring effects in, no problem. We have a ton of effects, right? Go over here, boom, all the effects we want. But since we've got this Kong drum designer in here, there is one set of effects that's kind of a, I'll call it a hidden uh, feature of Reason. And it's kind of funny because I've been using it forever. Some people never use it. And I think it's interesting because they're really a good set of effects that you can use. And they're, I'll call them free uh, when you bring in the Kong anyway. So why not use them? If I hit tab, you'll see that I flip to the back here and we can see this audio in right here. If I take our auxiliary out channel one and bring it over here and connect it there. And then we'll take the main out right here. And I will connect that right here. What I just did was I wired one of our effects, this effects one right here, through our Kong drum designer. And we can now utilize the bus and master effects. So if I go over here and I say, I want, we'll do a compressor. Now basically this is going in here and all the sounds are getting compressed. I can also add, or I could change this to something more obvious, like a uh, tape echo. Now, again, like the reason that I use this effect, uh, this mixer, is because it gives you four sends. You aren't bound to use just this one if you want. Uh, you can use two effects here. I could take this and maybe I want to throw a... Uh, We'll throw the room reverb on here. Aside from that, we have some basic EQ right here on each drum. Turn that on. Let's get right here, turn this down, turn that down, or up and that down. I can also bring in other effects. So if I want to add a little bit of a uh, little rattle or a little bit of distortion to that snare drum, I could do that by just going right down here to my effects and grabbing some other effect that I want to use. I'm going to use my basic, the very basic uh, distortion. Bring this guy right over here, drop it with the shift key again so it doesn't wire itself up. And now I'm just going to attach it to my send on two. And that lets me also control who is getting this. Basically, though, that's it. You can do whatever you want from here. You could add additional drums. What I do recommend is if you double click these names, underneath the uh, different triggers here, you give them names just so you know what you've got going on here. Organization saves time in the long run, you know? You should see the rest of my studio. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> it's a little bit of a mess a lot of times. But uh, yeah, as far as what my projects though are usually very organized. Um, I'll hit save and I'm just going to call this drum kit. Boom, save it replace that and boom we have our drum kit done and that's everything so now you know how to make drums with subtractor and can add the rest of the drums to this kit if you'd like maybe you want to do some toms or something else uh, or maybe you want to throw some samples in feel free to do whatever works for you do whatever makes your music the best it can be and that's the whole tutorial i hope you found that helpful and i hope that was interesting to you if it was don't forget to give me a thumbs up, like the video, subscribe to the channel, download the project, which I will put the description down in the, uh, in the comments or in the, just, yeah, in the description. That's what I meant to say. I'll put this down there, a link where you can download this drum kit to mess around with and use it for a basis to make your own. If you do make your own, Hey, share it with me. Let me know what you're doing. I would love to know that my projects are helping you and how they're helping you. And, uh, you know, pass the word around, share it with your friends, tell your people who, you know, who are reason users, whatever, 
uh, that this is out there. Help me grow the channel. I'd appreciate it. We're past 500 subscribers now, so that's awesome. And uh, we're on our way to 1,000, which I'm so excited. I can't wait to get the next 500 and get to 1,000 because that is going to be amazing. Thank you so much for coming and checking out the channel. Thanks for watching the video. I'll see you all in the next one. Be safe. Have an awesome day. Bye.